Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I'm back again. We had tried this earlier, and then we had some difficulties because of the span of the internet, and we're back, and he's there, Thornton Klein. You there, Thornton? Yes. Hey, welcome, everybody, and uh, thank you, Brad, for having me on your show today. I'm, an honor, I'm honored to be here. Yes, we just persevere. We're giving this another yes. shot, and it's much, much more clear. We just kind of got the cobwebs out of the way, and... Uh, We'll kind of go back from where we started. And the question okay. is, where are you located? And I already know because I'm psychic. Well, let's tell them because they don't know. It's Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, Music <laughs> City, USA. And I believe you said you had been there. I visited. I did, you know, and uh, only one time I went to a convention there. We're at the Hard Rock with the big guitar, uh -huh. you know, and all uh -huh. that kind of uh -huh. stuff. Uh -huh. A lot of sure. fun being down there. There's a lot of, but that's kind of like the place to go, kind of like Hollywood's where actors go. Music, it is. Go to Nashville. Yeah, they call it the third coast, I think, or something like that. The third coast, even though we don't have any water. Well, we have lakes. I can't wait to come see your, uh, you know, up in, in Minneapolis, well, in Minnesota, uh, at least 10,000 lakes. It could be more, but. <laughs> yep, and uh, we started where the Mississippi River starts. Mm -hmm. right it here. is. Beautiful cool. country. A mighty so. Mississippi. So are you married and you got kids down there, or are you all by yeah. yourself? Well, I'm married. My wife, Audrey, and I um, live here, and uh, we, uh, she's, uh, she teaches at a college, local college, English, and, uh, and then I, I do uh, my writings and all the things I do, and, um, and we have kids, yeah. One of them is an animator in Hollywood, out in uh, Los Angeles, animator, oh, wow. uh, for a show that he's doing, and uh, my, my son is Alex, and my daughter, our daughter is uh, uh, works for a college, uh, something called General, General Assembly, where she, uh, you know, is very popular today, online classes, co college classes. So she does those kind of things for, for, for well, students. Well, we're, we're kind of along the same road there. I'm a <laughs> magician is where I got my start doing magic as an entertainer. Uh, magic. You're a musician. And musician. my wife taught Spanish and your wife well, teaches English. So. <laughs> well, what do you, <laughs> just, to, just try to <laughs> turn around. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> So how long have you been involved with music? Well, I've been involved since I was five years old. So that's a very long time up till today. So uh, anyway, uh, I don't, I, well, my, I give credit to my parents for starting me out in music uh, and in writing too, because it all led to one thing led to another. I started at five years old and my, my mother got me into piano lessons. And I was, uh, I started making up these little, little ditties on the piano and they didn't seem like they meant anything, but they did. They added up to being writing hit songs today. And my, uh, uh, it's they they my parents always thought I was wasting their time, you know, by making up these little ditties instead of actually concentrating on a program, get with the plan, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, so a thousand songs later, I've written a thousand songs which which have been published published, and a hundred I've had one hundred and fifty of my songs recorded by major and independent artists. Some of the artists are uh, love it, um, is Engelbert Humperdinck, who is the king of romance uh -huh. singer, and uh, Ingl uh, Gloria Gaynor, who did the song, I Will Survive. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, my song um, garnered a platinum um, album. That means one million units sold or more. And then also um, was nominated twice as songwriter. I was actually awarded songwriter of the year twice here in Nashville. And also, uh, and I've won, um, um, several uh, Grammy and Dove nominations. And now it's led me to 2012 is where I'm starting to write books. I started writing books and uh, my, my philosophy is you're a writer, you're a writer, you know, <laughs> even if you can't write music, at least you write lyrics. And my, I believe a novel is nothing more than a, a three minute song, hit song, three to four minute hit song or vice versa. You know, it's just condensed, you know, uh, a hit song is three to four minutes and a novel is probably at least 60,000 pages or more than that plus. And so um, I have 32 traditionally published uh, books. I decided to go the route with traditional. Uh, there's nothing wrong with self publishing. It's great. And, and it works for people, some people, uh, but I get, advances on some of my books that means money ahead of time on the royalties they're not it's not free money and then the uh, I also sign traditional contracts where they 
they do all the work, they pay for everything, and then they send me a check and stuff so for money. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of good that your parents could not corral you into you know, doing the program. As, uh, <laughs> yeah, the program. <laughs> just, just let your artistic uh, vibe flow, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. Similar in my situation as a kid, I started doing magic as, as a kid when I was like four or five years old. A friend of my brother's made a quarter disappear and pulled it in my ear and just fascinated me. And you, you just kind of got to go your own space. You really can't corral an artist because it's it's very nebulous and and it sounds like uh, you just kind of just took off and you have all these um, all these hit hit records I guess hit songs hit songs uh -huh. and then another thing that's interesting what you're talking about as far as going the self published route versus or, or not going the self published route versus traditional because you know they both have their pros and cons with them because if you're self published yeah. that means you've got to self promote too. Well, yeah, and you, but you do own all your everything. You own everything, all your rights, everything total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well, true. But there's something to be said for that. Pros and cons of that. But I have <laughs> never actually self-published, so I don't know what it is. But I have friends that have. We're and I'll, I'll, that way out of it. I wanted to say something really cool, Brad. Today is a special day for me too. Uh, it's not an anniversary or any of those things. But what it is is um, my latest song. I wrote a song called "Cry Myself to Sleep." It's actually an up-tempo pop song. It releases on radio worldwide uh, today uh, with an artist from Nashville. He's a pop artist, not country, pop artist. And his name is Lucky Boy, L-U-C-K-I-E, Lucky Boy. And it's, it's, uh, it's, go it's been released to radio today. It is being released to radio as we speak. Cool. And, and so uh, we're, we're watch stations, Europe and in the U.S. too. So Let's give you a round of applause for that. Well, thank you. So, <laughs> so it just happened to coincidentally coincide with our uh, – our interview today, my interview. So just want to mention always, that. That's always exciting when you have something like that happen, you know, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a little milestone kind of thing. You can look back on it. Mm -hmm. It is. It's kind of exciting. So, uh, but uh, enjoying every minute of it. I have a lot of passion for it. I don't, I would do this whether I made um, two cents, five cents, whatever it is, a couple dollars or whether I was doing you know, making millions and millions. It's just, it's a passion for me. And uh, I don't, I don't want to stop doing it. Well, I'm having, I'm having cool fun about that. They say, if you do what you love, the money, do what you mm -hmm. love, you'll never work a day in your life. But that's if what they say. Mm -hmm. if you're just doing what you love. The money will follow it. If, if you mm -hmm. accept it. I mean, if someone right. says, yeah. Hey, I want to pay you for it. Accept it. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's out there. It's very so, true. Uh, earlier on, when we were talking, you were talking about how you write and you just kind of, kind of do a rough draft of it and then you start adding some things and you said you mentioned something about a a snowflake song could you reiterate all that stuff yeah you said yeah that? well um i'm they tell writers experts tell writers to write every day with as good or bad stuff okay <laughs> and i do a little bit of that but usually i get inspired by some moment it can be a picture of something someone anything that can suddenly inspire me a true story and one of the stories happened 2014, which became a hit on the radio worldwide. It's played every Christmas and holiday. It's actually a winter song. It's called Catch a Snowflake. And what happened was I was walking out of a school building visiting and all of a sudden all the sky just snowflakes. You've seen little snowflakes, but these are just gigantic ones. You can almost see every detail of it. And the kids around were just, captivated and, and enchanted by the snow and you could, you could just tell the joy what it brought to them and and um so they the whole ground was just blanketed by it and i suddenly got this idea the whole song came to me i wrote it down went home and started perfecting and working on it see i believe in capturing a kodak moment even though that's a dated word kodak moment but it's a, a photo moment uh, of everything every bit of emotion everything that's there and it could be just raw and then I come home and I work on it and perfect it and edit it till it's great. And a Nashville artist named Matt Newton, Newton, like Isaac Newton, but Matt Newton, uh, recorded it back in 2014. And it went to the top of the charts uh, in Euro charts and uh, um, around the world. And it's played every every holiday at Christmas and or during the winter season. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I like. I, I'm sort of a, I'm a Gemini. So I got the logical uh -huh. and the emotional uh -huh. stuff kind uh -huh. of going both ways. And right. 
I, well, I'm a Pisces. I'm Pisces, which means creative. Creative is. Yeah, there you go. All that creative stuff. I, I'm kind of creative, but it's more in the, the logical, strategic way of doing things. But uh -huh. I've seen situations where people are like they, you know, art where they write with a pencil and they sketch it out. It doesn't look like anything. And then as they add layers onto it, it ends up being and looking just like a photograph. So it mm -hmm. kind of sounds like that's how you write. You kind of just draft it out. Hey, there's a snowflake. It fell and the mm -hmm. kid grabbed it with his mouth and mm -hmm. whatever. And you start yeah. tweaking that thing and pretty soon it ends up being perfection. Exactly. It's the same way with books too. Some of the books I've written, particularly children's books, I've dreamt them uh, actually word for word, everything. Can you believe it? Wake up and see it. I say it in my mind, the entire thing, and I write it. That's how I write. Uh, I, I still continue to learn from the greats like John Grisham and uh, James Patterson. I take workshop, work, I've taken workshops and everything with them and, uh, they, you know, talk about doing outlines and everything. I, I kind of find that constricting to me as a creative person to do that, you know, but you might, uh, some people that have the more logical, you know, like you, you said, creative and logic together might find that very helpful. So when I think, when an idea comes to me of a book, like a dream, I do the entire, I write a synopsis out like a, a short beginning, middle, and end, just a very brief like paragraph of what it's all about. And then I go from there and I start writing. So. Well, that makes sense. Again, going to the more the painter, the artist kind of, there's some people uh -huh. who kind of have to sketch it out first. Right. And there's other right. people like to see some of these guys uh, that uh, just start painting with like spray paint and stuff, uh -huh. or just moving stuff around with their fingers and stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, art is a fascinating thing to me because I, I logically just don't understand how somebody can see something and then paint what they see. And then what you got is you kind of, I guess you hear music in your, in your head and you got to figure out, is this going to be a high note or a low note or. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I have my antennas out, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm hearing things, you know, I'm not literally hearing things. I don't hear voices, but I hear things, you know, ideas coming to me. <laughs> it's just yeah, funny. If you heard the voices, that'd be plagiarism. You don't I know, I know. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, they have that now in a, in a check. Did you know that on Grammarly? I do editing with Grammarly, professional Grammarly, and they have a plagiarism check where it says, checks to see if you've stolen it from anybody or something like that, but. Um, anyway, oh, I do have though. I I, I know before we go on everything, I do have a, a new book out. It's uh, on Amazon. Um, it's called a, a Novel Life, and we'd like to talk just a little bit of that too. It's absolutely, and then also when I beam this up to YouTube and things, I'll put mm -hmm. the Amazon link in there in case somebody wants to make that purchase. So, what, okay. tell us more about the book, a, a, no, oh. a Novel Life. A Novel Life. It's a play on words. I love wordplay. Just love it. It's a double entre, just like it's kind of like magic. To it, um, the novel is obviously a novel that the seventeen-year-old Colton Tucker wrote. Well, at least he thinks he wrote it, but he didn't really write it. You have to find out who really wrote the book, because somebody is writing that controls his every move, every action, every move, and what he wrote over a uh, a year ago on his sixty. He's taken a sixty-city book tour. And he is experiencing a deja vu moments of what he wrote. How cool is that? Amazing. And so, because when he was 17 years old, he wrote his debut uh, book called A Novel Life, and which I'm the author of it. But he, uh, so A Novel Life means living in the novel. He's the protagonist of the novel. And he also has an odd and strange life, too, which is novel. That's why it becomes, and it's a free and clear title. Nobody's ever written a title like that before. I've, I've checked it out, That's cleared it, but it's really interesting. And anyway, he does find out that somebody else is controlling his actions, his moves and everything. And he has a love interest he meets, uh, and Taylor is her name, in, in, um, in Laramie, Wyoming. If you've ever been to Laramie, Laramie, Wyoming, he meets her and discovers that she's been his book he's written and something cat catastrophic happens to her in the last chapter and he realizes if this is all happening then he's gonna something's bad's gonna happen to her so so he tries to to reach the editor and convince the editor-in-chief of the book that he signed a deal with and he can't convince him to sign it i mean to change change the ending he can't convince the editor to change the ending of his book so he takes destiny. We're talking about Colton, the protagonist, takes destiny into his own own hands. Uh, 
because the author of uh, the uh, editor won't cooperate. Interesting. So this almost sounds like it'd be like Groundhog Day kind of thing. Like there's a sequel. It is. It's sort of similar, <laughs> but it's not as funny. <laughs> it's it's a psychological thriller, actually. So it kind of messes with your mind a little bit. You know, kind of toys with your mind. It has has a really good twist and, and it reads fast too. It goes really really fast. It's published by SYP, which stands for Southern Yellow Pine Publishing Company. They're in Florida. And the um, publisher, I met the publisher here in Nashville when I was, this is really funny, uh, years ago, I met her and uh, she, it was at the uh, Southern Festival of Books. It's one of the biggest, it's like 100,000 people come to this in Nashville Book Festival. Wow. And I met her and I loved her books. I think her books are just fabulous. And the picture, her uh, drawings, I mean, illustrations on the front covers are gorgeous. And so I wanted to be a part of that company. And so I asked her how I could pitch her a send her a manuscript and she said this is how you do it so i sent it to her and she she really loved the loved the manuscript and it's been edited it and edited like, and edited sounds like you kind of got a life of serendipity you just knew where you wanted to go and everything just kind of fell into place and you're kind of going with the flow of how things go exactly you had that moment where you see something or someone or something and you know you've got to be there with that person or that or that opportunity or whatever it is and you go wow how do I do it next? <laughs> what do I do? Well, I, I call that uh, sort of like, like verbal algebra. Like when I'm doing mm -hmm. marketing or if I have a plan or something, I'll mm -hmm. just put something out into the future and then you just got to put the stuff in place for it. So algebraically, you know, if you want the number 10, you just got to put the right digits in place at equal 10 and that's how you get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's, exactly. It's, it's rarely a straight path, you know, because sometimes you might think it's going to be a two, but it ends up being two ones. Right. And so I saw the opportunity, potential opportunity, potential, because she could have turned the book down. She could have said, ah, I don't like this story. And well, uh, I would, and, I would kind of disagree because you've kind of I disagree? Mistake and said, okay, this is okay. what's going to happen. And now you just start putting the things in place until it happens. Oh no, I'm, I didn't mean it that way. I meant you I, I, I agree with you on that part. I did put it out there, but I mean, it could have been her, that publisher, or it could have been somebody else. You see what I mean? Right. But, that's, uh, that's exactly uh, what I mean. It's uh, you never know how stuff's going to go. Cause I'm sure when you were five and you thought I'm going to play <laughs> the piano, you never thought, well, I'm going to be in Nashville writing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Probably didn't it's, think of that, but that's the way it worked. <laughs> isn't it neat? It's exciting. There's a book called big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And I, I love it. I've read it, read it. And uh, she talks about all these ideas are floating around. This is like magic too. All these so ideas. Elizabeth Gilbert, is that the one that did the. Uh, Eat, pray, uh, and love. Eat, eat, pray, and love. love. Yeah. I, saw, I met her in, when I was in Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville, really? Not in she, she's Asheville. awesome. She's awesome. And she says all these ideas are just floating around in the universe, all over the idea. It's up to us to grab them and seize them. But she says not to procrastinate with them. Once you get an idea, like for a song or magic trick or whatever it is, or a book, you need to get on it and jump on it. But she said most people procrastinate. Most of us procrastinate and wait. And then we complain. She says like years later, and we go, wait a minute, somebody stole my idea, took my idea. And it really wasn't your idea. It's nobody's idea. It was, it was there for the taking. You follow what I'm saying? So. Yes, sir. You got to stake your claim and then go for it and start building stuff around it. So it manifests. Yeah. Right. Like 10 people could be picking up the idea at the same time, but it's kind of like Edison got there first, right? For the white bulb, right? Maybe yeah. you know, possibly for the filament. Yep. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm in total agreement and there's nothing wrong with uh, two people having the same idea at different places and then they come uh -huh. together at some other time and, and meld the ideas together into another one. It's all mm -hmm. good. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Like that's why I've never really, remember I was, I was talking earlier about our local prince, remember prince, the, the, he created himself as a symbol because uh -huh. Uh -huh. he was under contract and he yeah, said, Mr. well, heck with that, I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to, I'm just, I'm formally known as Prince and now I'm just a concept. Try and steal that from me. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Purple Rain, right? Yeah, that's great. That's, right. <laughs> that's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> wow. And well, that's sort of like, I think the artist's perseverance, they can get, they're creative. So it's really mm. tough to, you, you can't really corner them and put them into a pen or anything like that because they, they, they need to be out and be nebulous and mm -hmm. creative. Exactly. Very good. Great. 
<laughs> so do you do you have anything planned in the future? You got your book. You've been doing the hits. You got it. I'm sure you're going to continue to write. But do you, do you have any plans like doing like a music retreat or something in some exotic location or or do online workshops and teach other people how to write or anything like that coming up? Yes, I'd like I haven't yet, but I, I, I my one of my goals is to off, offer to other people to help people because I want to help people as much as possible. Other authors, uh, potential authors and people that are up and coming and uh, through workshops and uh, maybe camps and things like that. And, um, and then I continue to always um, grow. I always want to learn. I don't want to just stay stagnant or whatever. I want to be able to, or stale. Um, so I always take lots of workshops and I mean, I've, I've done one with um, R.L. Stein. I've done one with uh, uh, just uh, James Patterson, uh, John Grisham, just different people I continue to learn. And I want to continue to grow and up my, what do they call the up your game or up your level, you know, continue to uh, climb up the level or higher, you know. Well, they say you're either green and growing or ripe and rotting. <laughs> yeah, well, I would hope to be the green and growing, you know. That's right. So. <laughs> well, Thornton, I appreciate you taking the time. I don't like to do these too long so people yeah, can yeah. consume it all. Right, But right. it sounds like you might have something on the horizon and maybe we'll do another one of these later on down the road. If yeah, you want I'd love to stay to. on for a couple of minutes, I'm going to sign this off, but he'll stay on. We'll have a little conversation. Okay. And, uh, yeah. I appreciate you taking the time. I will beam this up to the universe and we will see who can find it. Okay? Yeah, and best, best of luck to you, Andrew Pratt. Everything, all your. <laughs> okay, thank you, Thornton. Peace. Thank you. Peace.